QuickBooks Online 2C Invoicing Using an Estimate. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of Singleness Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page and our email. The website and the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, that we teach online every week. And the Twitter page. I'll now go to the uh, home page of QuickBooks. And we're going to talk about a situation where I buy a product from a vendor using a purchase order. And it's a product that I'm going to sell to a client. So I'm going to see a vendor. I'm going to create a purchase. I've created a purchase order. And then we're going to bill the client. We're going to charge the client for that product that we ordered and sell it to them. So if I go to vendors and I go to vendor list you'll see that I created a company called nearly complete jeans that and that company creates a product that I buy as a vendor and I turn around and sell to my client and I charge a markup so I'm gonna to go to purchase order and you'll see that I've crea already created a purchase order for to buy the jeans from Nearly Complete Jeans. Now, th there's a couple of ways I can do it and see it. I could go to Nearly Complete Jeans on the vendor dropdown. But I'll go to Recent, and you'll see that purchase order number 1002 is the Nearly Complete Jean order. So... I send a document to Nearly Complete Jeans, raise my hand and say, I want to buy some of your product. Here's the vendor address. They're going to ship them to me, my company, at Sturdy Blue Jeans. The PO or purchase order date and number. The product I'm buying is the Nearly Complete model of jeans. I bought 50 pairs at $50. And the customer I'm ultimately going to sell them to is Fancy Clothing, which I've already used in a prior video. So there is my purchase order. There is my purchase order. And in fact, I'm going to, uh, let me change this amount here because I'm gonna, let's just say that I buy uh, 10 pairs, 100 pairs, I'm gonna make that 5,000. Let me see if I can get that to change. You see that I've got it itemized by product or service. Let me see if I can get that to tell you. There we go. So I'm going to say that I'm buying uh, 5,000 pairs of jeans. And it says purchase order 1,002 modified. So let's go back to it. Nearly complete jeans. So I'm paying $5,000 for my <clears throat> pairs of jeans, my purchase order from Nearly Complete Jeans. Now, the next step is to go to Customer. And I'm going to go over to Unbuild S Invoice Unbuild Activities. And here's what it says. To create invoices, you must enter a charge, credit, billable expense, or time. So let's see if I can enter a charge. My customer's fancy clothing. It's the only customer I have loaded so far. The product or service. I'm going to sell them those nearly complete model jeans. I see a description that says jeans that are nearly complete. They only require a small amount of labor. So I will incur some labor costs to finish these jeans for the client. And I'm going to say that the amount I'm going to sell them for is 7000 And if I hit save, it says charge number one added. And if I go to recent, I can see the charge. And so I can see that I've charged a client. So, again, what I did was I went to Unbuild Activities. I created a charge and fancy clothing a customer, a customer that I sell to. 
bought my nearly complete model, was charged for my nearly complete model jeans for $7,000. So I bought them from nearly complete for $5,000 and now I'm selling them for $7,000. Now let's go to customer invoice. <clears throat> Choose a customer first. Fancy clothing. And we see down here, unbilled charges, credits, or expenses. So I can now select the charge to this client. I'm going to hit plus. Let's just see what happens. And it says select to include on invoice. So I'm going to put a check mark there. Charge number one on the 5th for $7,000. And so what it did was it transferred that charge to an invoice. And I can stick in nearly complete jeans here as a description. The description fills. I could do that if I wanted. And I've got a balance due of $7,000. Some other features on here that you'll notice, and we covered them when we did the last, uh, when we did the estimate. I've got an invoice date. I've got an invoice number. The terms they're going to pay within 30 days. We saw this when we did the other fancy clothing invoice. I can pick the product that I want. I could deal with a discount. Maybe, I tr maybe there's a percentage discount if they pay within a certain period. We'll do that on a later video. I also have tax. Maybe I have to collect sales tax and pay that to a taxing authority. So I'm going to hit save and let's just see what happens now. It says invoice number 1002 added. Now, one last thing. Let's look at our reports and see what the impact is in the financials. I'm just going to go to plain old vanilla profit and loss. And if I were to look at the detail of the sales here, I'm going to click on the sales number. I see that I have the 1,002 fancy clothing, and I have the, a receivable posted for $7,000 for money that I'm owed. And if I go back to the report, Profit and loss. I have a sales number there, and I just saw that I have a receivables number. So if I went to report balance sheet, and I have an account receivable, and I click on that, I see that I created an invoice on the 5th for fancy clothing, for $7,000. So one side of the transaction is under accounts receivable. If I go back to profit and loss, the other side of the transaction is under sales, 7,000. So what we've done in this video is create, look at a purchase order, create a charge, create an invoice. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.